Hey, this is Wolf from Armoury Train, and don't mind the sweaty shirt and the sweat dripping off me. We're just sitting here waiting for a storm to roll in this afternoon. Temperature's not too bad. It's only like 32 degrees, which is, what, about 90 degrees for the people in the US? And as we all know, I'm kind of obsessed with mushrooms. So the project for today is a mushroom nightlight, which is also going to be a fairy house. For the build, you're going to need two two litre soft drink bottles. Whichever brand you drink, I personally um, recommend Pepsi Max for max taste, no sugar. Come on Pepsi, give me a sponsorship deal. My channel's almost big enough. Um, we're also going to be using some floor mat tile and parts of an old cooler bag. Basically, one of the shopping bags that's broken up a bit and I've just harvested a little bit of shininess out of it. In addition, we're going to need a wooden base to glue it down to. This was salvaged from another project, hence the silver, the bronze paint. And most importantly, a little light to put in the bottom. So this is just a press LED light. Runs on three batteries, which means this night light is going to be able to go anywhere and be turned on and off and not have to worry about cabling. Now our construction is all going to be with hot glue gun and then a little bit of paper mache. So let's get into it. First step is with one of the bottles, cut it at the top and the bottom of the label and hang on to the middle part, removing the label. Top and the bottom is a throwaway. With the other bottle, you're just cutting at the top. So cut that off, remove the label, which will leave you with two, pe two bottle pieces like this. Carefully force one inside the other. Now, once they go down about a centimetre, centimetre and a half, they should stay in place, since they are such a tight fit. If you're worried about them moving, you could add a couple of dabs of super glue to secure them. Okay. So that gives us enough height. Next step is with the foam, cut two circles the diameter of your base so that they'll sit into it. And then on the back of the bottle, we're cutting an access point. Now this can be a little bit sharp, especially in the corners if you haven't cut it perfectly. So you might want to run a little bit of gaff tape around it just to give you an edge. So I'm going to glue this down to the base. Uh, the bottom layer is solid. The top layer has the hole the right size for the torch to go into. And this is how I'll be securing the bottle down to the wooden base. And you'll just be able to reach in and turn on and turn off the torch. And when it's time to change batteries, you'll just be able to lift it out, change batteries, put it back in and go again. Okay, I'll do some assembly and I'll jump back and show you how it's going. Okay, so the base is now stuck down. It's stuck down to the back of it because on the front here I'm going to put some plants and grass and a fairy if I can find one of the right size. Now when it comes to gluing the bottle down to it, put the hot glue on the foam instead of on the bottle because apparently the bottle plastic will deform at the temperature of hot glue. Now, before we glue that down, you take the circle that you've ripped out of the cooler bag or a bit of alfoil or some mirror tape or anything else you've got and you form a cone that will fit up in the top of the bottle. This allows you to have some of the light bounce back down and to get a bit more cool effect happening. Now to glue this in, all we're doing is putting some glue on the very top of it, hot glue, Okay, let's do the countdown to me burning myself because this is going to happen. I can see this. And just stick it to the top of the bottles, like so. Yep, burn myself just at the very end. We now have a nice silver piece at the top here to reflect the light down. So gluing the bottle onto the foam, nice and easy, just run your bead of hot glue around the foam and push the bottle onto it, making sure that the opening that you've cut 
is at the back for access and not at the front where we're going to add details. Okay, that was me burning myself again. Maybe some contact adhesive would be a better plan for this, but the hot glue seems to be going on okay. It's just melting the bottle a little bit. But since we're going to be covering this with paper mache, it shouldn't be a big issue. Okay, so the bottle's now secured. The light will go in, turn on okay. That'll help reflect the light down again. So I'll pull that out while we're playing with it. And now what I'm going to do is get some thin cardboard and just make some patterns for windows and doors. Mm. And somehow I've managed to get this on here so it's tilted, which is not a good thing. Luckily the hot glue is still warm enough that I can straighten it up a bit. Otherwise my mushroom would have been very, very tilted. Speaking of the mushrooms, we'd better put a cap on this, hadn't we? So once again, we grab our bit of floor mat and a nice round bowl. Normally these are used for mixing icing or similar. And we cut a circle, the diameter of the bowl, heat it up, force it into the bowl and we get a nice roundish mushroom cap. And that'll glue on there. And that'll give us the top of the mushroom. So I'm going to go design these windows and doors and show you what I'm up well, to. Well, that storm I was talking about earlier is reached here, and we're in a big metal shed, and there's lightning and thunder going on, so we're going to call it a night and go inside. Um, if you, with this project, you can see I've carved a stone archway out of the floor tiles, as well as a doorstop, and then I've just used some 6mm foam that I've had floating around. You could use a couple of layers of 2mm craft foam, or more floor mat, uh, with the windows, all I did was grab a piece of cardboard tube, traced around the inside and the outside, and then drew a cross across, and that's my windows. You can see it's got a nice hole in the back to make it easy to access, and at the moment, the whole thing glows. Still got to paint it, of course, and maybe one more layer of paper mache once this is fully dry. For my paper mache, I use tissues, and a watered down PVA glue mix of about 60% glue, 40% water and just brush it on and it seems to work really well. Now the only other thing this needs is the mushroom cap. Now of course you could choose not to make this a mushroom nightlight and turn it into say a stump or similar just by building the top of it up a bit and making it more round. And I am sweating terribly out here from the humidity. But basically, short of one more layer of PVC paint and some, or PVC glue in fact, and some painting, this is pretty much done. So tomorrow when it's no longer storming, or maybe even late tonight, I'll come back out here and I'll finish this off and show you the finished product. So here we have the finished fairy house. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any fairies in my workshop tonight. They must all have been hiding from the storm. But this is how the finished piece looks. For the stalk, I used a mixture of antique white and warm orange. The windows are all raw sienna. And the mushroom cap is vermilion and antique white. The stonework is just a house mix of grey with some black texture. Now for the important thing is to see how it looks lit up. Hopefully this camera will do the low light. As you can see the entire mushroom glows. This is the back of it with the cutout. And going back around to the front. Now why use an LED instead of plugging into the power? Well, the LED doesn't get hot, and because there's no power cord, you can put it up high where the child cannot get to it. Also, because there's no power cord, they can't partly pull it out of the wall and shock themselves. So anyway, this is Wolf from Armoury Terrain, sitting in the dark, saying, go out and make something.